Hi guys, Ross here and welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to use user data in Cinema 4D and Redshift. User data is something we can use to improve the efficiency and overall speed of our workflow in Cinema 4D. And today I wanna to talk about how we can use it specifically with Redshift and texturing. So we're gonna go over a couple methods of how I use it in my day-to-day -day work to add variation to textures, improve the efficiency of our workflow when using the same material for multiple objects and how we can add variation amongst those objects whilst using the same material all with the power of user data so we're going to scratch the surface in today's video but if you want to learn more you can head over to the patreon where i talk about how we can use this in conjunction with other nodes to add variation across mograph cloners and textures and objects and just deep dive more into user data but today is going to be a great starting point if you're unfamiliar with it so i hope you enjoy the video and i'll catch you on the flip side. Enjoy. Okay, so we're in Cinema 4D and we have this pretty simple interior scene set up with a bench and some objects which we're going to use to showcase user data. But before we dive into that, I will quickly just show you the setup because I know people will be wondering. It's just one HDR from PG Skies 1658 to be precise with 20% saturation and a gamma of 0.9 just to make it a little bit softer, a little less harsh in terms of the sunlight. And then outside of the camera, if we just dive out, you can see we just have this kind of square box with three windows and these three objects here they're not really doing much they were previously because i had different camera angles and different lighting but with the current setup we don't really need them so you can kind of just ignore those but yeah that's pretty much it so it's fairly simple but the magic in this video is going to be the user data if you did want me to go over more interior stuff just let me know because the feedback on the interior tutorials have been amazing so clearly people want to see more so yeah let me know in the comments section down below if there's a particular type of interior you would want me to focus on or anything within that subject so user data let's start off simple and we'll work our way up so the first setup i want to create is is essentially where we can have one material applied to multiple objects but each of them have their own unique color so let's do that so we're going to double click to create a new material and we're using the lovely new standard material and i'm just going to apply this to all the objects so i'm going to select all of them from the side by just control clicking all of them and with these selected i can then right click on our material hit apply and that's going to apply it to all of our selected objects shout out to grayscale gorilla for sharing that tip the other day that's a really really useful one so we have this gray standard material applied obviously this is just the default shader and we want them to have unique colors so how do we set that up so if i double click to bring up our node menu i can type in user data and you can see we have five options now in this case we're using color so we're going to want to use the color user data but we will touch on one of the other options later on and hopefully once i demonstrate kind of these setups you'll be able to figure out how you can apply it to all of these different user data options so let's double click on color user data and let's just plug this straight into the base color since that's what we want to affect within our objects and by default you can see on the right hand side here it's going to default to black Obviously, that's not what we want. How do we get them to each have their own unique color? Now, there's a few ways to actually do this, but in this case, and I think this is the easiest way, is to use display color. Probably you haven't noticed this just because people never really tend to look at this basic tab. But if you were to select an object, go to the basic tab, and then scroll down and you see display color, you can see by default it's set to material. But if I change this to custom, I can actually go into here and I can give our object a custom color. And that's going to update in the viewport. But we obviously want that to translate across to the render view. We've set this bench to a red color. This is really easy to set up now. All we need to do is go back to our color user data node and I'm just going to undock the attributes. Otherwise, this is going to be cut off the edge of the screen. But we just need to go to our attribute name and press this presets button. And we have three menus up here. We have MoGraph, Objects and Particles. Now, we're not using MoGraph. We're not using any cloners. We are using Objects. So let's go to objects and you can see now we have that lovely display color option. So let's enable that and you're going to see straight away in our render view, it now updates to the display color that we set within that object. I'm just going to reset to my startup layout just so the attributes dock into the corner and let's refresh that render view and there we go. Now we could select the rest of the objects, go to display color change it to custom and just go through each of these one by one applying whatever color we see fit. This is a super simple and super quick way to have one material apply to a bunch of objects and have them all have unique 
colors or unique properties. So obviously we've started this off pretty simple just by giving them all their own color, but we could take this up a level and maybe look at another parameter within the material which we can automate. For example, if we wanted this object here on the right hand side to be metallic, obviously at the moment, if I was to change the metalness to one, that's gonna affect all of the objects. You can see now they've all got a metalness and a metallic finish to them, but, but that's not what we want. We want it to apply just to the one object. So how can we do that? So if I was to select the not object here, you can see that we have this user data tab at the top above the rest of the normal menus. I can press add user data and now we're going to get this manage user data menu pop up. And you can see now we have all these options on the right hand side for how we want to set up our user data. Now in this case, we want this to affect our metalness. So I'm just going to type in metalness and this name doesn't really matter. It's just for kind of convenience sake so that we know what we're trying to achieve with this user data. So I'm going to call it metalness. So by default, this is set to a float value with a percent unit. So you can see it's set to 1%. Obviously metalness we know runs from zero to one. So percent isn't really going to work in this situation. Luckily, this is pretty easy to change. We can just change the unit from percent to real. And you can see we have a bunch of other options. We have degree, we have length unit. When I said bunch, I mean two more options, but we are going to set it to real, which is just a number. At the moment, we're limiting the minimum to zero and the max to a thousand. Obviously metalness goes from zero to one. So let's change the max to one. And that's pretty much the user data set up. If I hit okay and I select our object again, you can see we now have this user data tab appear alongside all the other default options. So what we can do now is we can dive back into our material, double click and type in user data. And in this case, we want a integer user data and that's gonna bring this in. And you can see instead of this one having a color as the default, this one has a number. So this tells us that we're working with integers, we're working with numbers, which is just what we want for this situation. Because this isn't a preset, we created our own user data. We need to make sure we type in the attribute name exactly the same way as we typed it out when we set it up. So we're going to type in metalness and that will basically link to the user data we've set up on our object. And let's plug this into the base metalness. Now by default, it's set to zero. So everything's going to just look like it was. It's going to look like a diffused texture, but but let's go to our object and change the metalness to one. And what we should see now is that this now looks metallic. And this is just another way we can create additional parameters within this one material and create unique outcomes across multiple objects. You could kind of imagine how this could be applied to all sorts of different parameters on our material. For example, we could set one up for reflection weight or reflection color and have them all have different reflection colors. And you could really go as wild as you want with this. So that was pretty easy to set up across multiple objects, but how would we do that across a cloner? Well, we have this cloned wall here, which is built up of different cubes, and this is going to be the second user data setup. So let's create a new material and we'll just apply this to the cloner. Again, this is just going to default to a gray kind of shiny material, which is fine, but we want to add some variation across all of these different tiles just to make it feel a bit more realistic. Now we can't really do that with the display color because it's just going to affect the display color for the whole cloned object. We need to do something else and we actually need to use effectors in this situation for this to work. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cloner. I'm going to go to MoGraph, Vector and Random. And obviously by default, it's going to enable position. We actually don't want it to make any changes to position, rotation or scale. We're using this purely to help randomize the color. And you can see we actually have this color tab in our random effector. Now by default, it's set to off. But if I change this to effect a color, what you're going to see now is in the viewport, we have all these randomized colors. So what we can do now is we can go to our material, type in color user data. We can go to our attribute name. Again, I'm just going to undock this so you can see. We can press presets, MoGraph and color. And again, I'm just going to reset my layout refresh the render view. And if we just solo this color user data, what we're going to see is this doesn't quite look right. I mean, we're getting the randomized color, but we're getting these weird artifacts with these kind of big blocks of just bright white, which isn't what we want. What I found as an easy way to fix this is just to drop a color correct node. And for some reason, as soon as you plug this into a color correct and solo the color correct, it then sorts out all the colors and they're all randomized. Now, if I was to plug this into the base color, what we'll see is that now we just have these randomized colors across the whole cloned object, which is perfect. But obviously this is a little bit too drastic. So what I did in the example was I then dropped down a ramp node 
And I just remapped this to be between like a gray and like an orangey kind of color. So let's just connect to this. And you can see this is going to convert to black and white, which actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the interpolation of both of these points to linear, just so it doesn't crush the colors as much. And let's change this black color to instead, maybe like, I don't know, 80% value and maybe like 50% saturation, 25% hue, something like that. That's actually a little bit too bright. So let's maybe drop that down to 60%. And then let's change this white to, I don't know, like 60% as well. Now what you can see is we have some lovely kind of randomization across the tiles where some are this like orangey kind of color and some are more of this like neutral off-white color and you could obviously go as crazy as you want with this so I could add in another point in the middle maybe change this to more of a saturated red color and now you're going to get some red tiles in there as well and you could just keep adding as many points as you want to essentially create as many different colors as you'd like so I'm just going to actually remove those let's keep it something like this and maybe I will just darken them ever so slightly and make them a bit more saturated. And I'll do the same with this gray color, just add a little bit of saturation. So that is how you create some randomization across a cloner and add some random color to it just to kind of break it up and create some variation. But this is very random. Maybe you wanted it to be a bit more linear from left to right. Well, we can do that as well. What we need to do is drop another color user data node. And this one's gonna be pretty straightforward. All we're gonna do is go to presets. I'm gonna undock this quickly. And all we're gonna do is go to presets, MoGraph and index ratio. And if I was to solo that node, what we can see is that it basically just creates a black to white gradient going from left to right. Now this looks a little bit clamped. So there is a bit of a workaround for this. And I'm just gonna dock this back in there. That's not how I wanted it, but that, that works for now, that's fine. Like I said, there's a bit of a workaround we need to do in order for these kind of values to map properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop a color correct node. We're going to connect the color user data into the input of the color correct node. What we're going to do is just boost the gamma from one to 2.2. And you can see now this maps properly where the far left is completely black and the right is completely white. Well, this clone does go a little bit off the screen, so it's not completely white, but you get the drift. This now maps properly across our cloner. And what we could do now is we could do a similar thing, remap it and have a look at this. And now we kind of get this effect where it starts off with like this orange and starts to fade more towards a white color. I'm just gonna default back to my startup layout just because I don't like <laughs> what I was seeing. Um, but like I said, we could remap this. Maybe I can make this a bit more extreme. So like from red to purple. And now you have this really cool red to purple gradient. And it's not as random. It's a bit more uniform and linear and just like using a ramp. But it's all through a procedural color user data. So it's really, really useful. I'm going to go back to the previous version and I'll leave it as... I'm not going to leave it as orange and purple. I was about to say I was going to leave it as orange and purple, but I'm not. That's a lie. Let's uh, drop this back down to like this gray kind of color. There we go. And uh, let's just delete the other one. But that is all done through the index ratio. So those are two methods for randomizing color on your cloner, adding some variation. Okay, so let's take this user data to the next level. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you found it useful and found some ways you can apply user data to your own work. And if you want to deep dive more into user data, go and check out the video on Patreon where we talk about how we can use this to drive variation in our textures, in MoGraph cloners, and just a bunch of other ways to use it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are in the world, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.